The Milwaukee Bucks are the most confusing team in the NBA. They're the second seed in the East, but they haven't played like one. To put things in perspective, they have lost three straight to the worst teams of the league, but they have also been the Thunder by 30 and the Suns and Clippers without Giannis. So how do we make sense of this? After watching this team, there are a few main factors that have put the Bucks in their current position. When the Bucks unexpectedly lost in the first round last year, one of the biggest reasons was because of the lack of versatility in their offense. Besides Giannis, no one, especially their guards, could provide a consistent scoring punch. So in the offseason, the Bucks acquired Damian Lillard to pair with Giannis, which seemed like the perfect duo. Having an elite shooter and ball handler alongside the most explosive big man would put incredible pressure on defenses, especially in the pick and roll. But a few things happened throughout the season. First, David and Giannis were rarely running the pick and roll to start the year. And two, when they have ran it, it hasn't worked out for one major reason. You see, Giannis has never played with a guard that's a primary ball handler and shooter. In the past, he's mostly been scritty to score. He has always looked to slip the screen to get behind the defense, expecting a pass and that he can do the rest. He's done the same this season, which you think would make sense because the big man's going to be pulled up to guard Dame. But that hasn't exactly happened. While Dame's shot is certainly a problem, teams are prioritizing Giannis. What the best big man defenders do is play up on the pick and roll and then start dropping when Giannis releases himself from the screen. When this happens, Dame's defender ends up not getting screened at all, and the Bucks have to pivot to an isolation instead. Screening looks very straightforward. You get in position to make contact on the player and then roll to the basket. But in reality, the big man has to recognize how the defense is playing the pick and roll in a split second. Typically, when a defender is in drop coverage, the big man would typically set a hard screen on the on-ball defender so that the ball handler could get an open look. Slipping the screen is most effective when defense is aggressively double-teamed Dame, but the superstar duo forgot to take into account one major thing. To pull the big man defender up, they need to believe that Dame is going to shoot the ball. And while Giannis has not helped Dame get open, Dame has not been so productive either. Throughout his career, Dame has never played with a big man that is primarily looking for the ball off the pick and roll. But with Giannis as a screener, it appears that at times he's primarily looking to set Giannis up. You could tell by the way he comes off the ball screen and how it holds them back. Here Giannis comes up to set the screen and watch Dame's pace. He has a chance to turn the corner with AD focus on Giannis, but he ends up moving laterally which allows Dinwiddie to recover and ends up trying to isolate him and throws a bad pass in traffic. Now when another big man sets the screen, Dame is coming off much harder. Even though AD stifles him initially, Dame can pull him out to the perimeter and he knocks down the three. The reason his pace is so different is actually pretty simple. Because the best defender is typically guarding Giannis, Dame isn't necessarily looking to score in those pick and rolls. Now he could certainly score against them, but he could score much more efficiently with Lopez as a screener because he could get a better matchup. Essentially, Dame and Giannis both expected teams to blitz more than they actually have. For them to pull the big man up more consistently, Dame should look to score more often off the pick and roll. That's because dribble handoffs seem to create the reaction that they're looking for. The dribble handoff can act as a pick and roll, but there's one big difference. Defenders have less time to prep for a dribble handoff, but Dame is often sprinting into these actions. A defender's natural reaction then is to step up on the screen, which then opens up the roll to the basket. If they're not there, Dame is going to shoot it with space. Even when defenders are in the right position, stopping Giannis is almost impossible. Here, Draymond knows that the dribble handoff is coming, and he's smart enough to drop because he's preparing for the Giannis roll. However, since Giannis sets a good screen and Dame looks like he's going middle, Draymond has to shade towards him, opening up a bounce pass for a cutting Giannis, and no defense can stop that. So while the dribble handoff creates the ideal results, the only thing that they're actually running consistently is pick and rolls at the top of the key. In fact, it's shocking to see the Bucks run dribble handoffs with guys like Pat Connaughton or Malik Beasley who aren't bad shooters by any means, but are far less threatening than Dame. In addition, Dame has seldom set ball screens for Giannis as well. For someone whose game is predicated around driving to the rim, I've been curious as to why they have not run this more especially when I see the Bucks running the inverted pick and roll with other guys. 
Milwaukee's inability to implement different actions for the superstar duel ends up plaguing their whole offense. Because of Milwaukee's roster construction, Dame and Giannis are the only players that create offense at the rim. So if they're not working together, the defense can predict what might be coming. That's partially because the superstar duo doesn't exactly trust the role players with the ball in their hands, and defenses aren't scared of that possibility anyways. In fact, Golden State essentially dared the Bucks' role players to drive to the rim. Their role players' primary strength is shooting, but someone has to create those open shots for them. And that's why the Dame and Giannis pick and roll has to work because it opens up everything else. When Giannis does dive successfully and gets the 4 on 3, he's been more than fine at finding the right man. The role players have also more or less delivered when they are open, but it's the process of getting them open that has been quite inconsistent. So for a team that should be more offensively dynamic, their team is reliant on the individual skill of Damon Giannis to be efficient. And while that has made their offense very good, it hasn't been explosive enough to cover for the defensive concerns. The Doc Rivers hiring in the middle of the season has been an interesting choice. The reason the Bucks wanted him was because he's capable of simplifying the defensive scheme. But he could do that in the past because he's had great perimeter defenders that can naturally disrupt the offense. In Milwaukee, he doesn't have that luxury as this Bucks team is older and less mobile than the past. That in itself is an issue, but it has been exacerbated by the lack of defensive awareness that has hurt them in all facets, but especially in transition. Here, Draymond is pushing the break and Beasley has a chance to pick him up. But because Beasley's matchup is Curry, he instead watches Green run down the lane, even though Curry isn't even in the picture. You see, defense today is barely just about who you're assigned to. Even the best perimeter defenders need help on the back line because of the skill of today's game. Since Milwaukee's personnel is not great defensively, they need even more help from other help defenders to cover the offensive action. And that's what makes a Doc Rivers signing strange. In the past, he has typically wanted his help defenders to stay home on the shooters and trust that the on-ball defender can handle the action. But that doesn't work in Milwaukee because they don't have good enough on-ball defenders to defend the action individually. That has shown as each player seems to be more vested in staying on their matchup and allowing their teammates to handle the offensive action at hand. To make things worse, this team has a tendency to not communicate, which is always going to lead to open shots. D'Lo runs the pick and roll, and Bobby Portis hedges the screen. Gallinari is covering the roller, but Portis doesn't seem to get the memo until the last second. By that time, Prince drives past Portis, and Hayes gets fouled. Just a few possessions later, D'Lo runs the same pick and roll, and Portis hedges the screen again. With Connington on the roller, Portis still runs to Jackson Hayes, leaving Austin Reeves open for three. So on certain days, this team looks like they have no idea what's going on. But the funny thing is, they have shown that they can defend at a high level. Against OKC's full roster, the Bucks held them to 94 points due to being in the right position all the time. This meant that each player may have to leave their defender and trust that the next defender will follow through. The Bucks start this possession by performing a beautiful switch on ball. OKC tries to counter by attacking Dame, but as Shea drives into the lane, Giannis is there to help. After Dort gets the ball and drives, Beasley fights through the screen to card Chet, and as Chet attacks him, Beasley beautifully peels off to Dort. As Dort then drives, Giannis helps again, and Chet looks open, but Dame is there to contest his three. So why hasn't this been more consistent? While I do think part of the blame is the incompatibility between the Bucks personnel and Doc's coaching strategy, the bigger issue seems to be the lack of understanding of the game plan. At times, it looks like each defender on the floor is playing a different coverage, which ends up confusing themselves. Sometimes they don't switch the ball screen when they're supposed to. Other times the help defender is helping in the gap at one possession, which creates a steal, and then doesn't help on another possession, leading to an easy floater. So when everyone's not on the same page or unsure of where they're supposed to be, it makes sense why the communication is not there. Especially for a team that needs to communicate as much as possible since they're slower, their defense starts to become more vulnerable by the day. In conclusion, there are some fundamental problems with this team, but it's more from a chemistry standpoint instead of roster construction. When that happens, you'll usually see a lot of inconsistency throughout an 82-game season. In fairness to Milwaukee, the Dame trade came very late into the offseason, so there was less time to prepare for a completely different personnel. As a result, 
It may truly just take more than a season to get everything up to speed, but right now, they are not giving themselves a chance to overcome these deficiencies. And no matter who they hire or what personnel they bring in, if these internal chemistry struggles continue to persist, this team probably won't win a championship with this roster. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please feel free to check out some of our other content, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.